Welcome everyone, I'm Justin Paprini with White Collar Advice. For the last two days in San Diego, my team and I have been at a criminal defense lawyer conference and it was highlighted this morning by a wonderful presentation by three federal judges. Now, coming videos and blogs and podcasts will get extensively into what Judge Gutierrez, Rogers, and Bulware said about white collar crime sentencing, mitigation, life before prison, after prison. We're gonna cover it extensively. What I wanna quickly convey is something that Judge Bulwer said, he's a judge in Nevada. Please keep walking, we're okay. fine here. Okay, I yes, don't know sir. if you're trying to do me. <laughs> we're just doing impromptu stuff, trying okay. to help people, that's all. Have a great day, thank you. What I thought was most fascinating was something where he said, this is the order of mitigation as I see it. Number one, the defendants have to do the work. Number two, the lawyers do the work. And number three, friends and family do the work. Too many defendants get it in the wrong order. In other words, the lawyer, the friends and family, the defendant sitting back on the sidelines. You have to do all of that work and that was continually conveyed throughout this theme. Further, I have all our team has always discussed the importance of work, of having to create a new record as a law-abiding citizen, paying taxes, showing that you can rebuild. And the judge specifically cited a case where he gave a measurably lower sentence where a physician who had been, let's walk over here because people are gonna be walking by, where a physician had been earning, I think, half a million dollars a year, gets fired, of course, because of his conduct, and he begins working at Home Depot. And he thought, rather than just saying, I'm sorry and I'll do better, it showed a great deal of humility of taking a job that was beneath his skill set, further, beneath his skill set, further what he saved, he helped contribute to restitution, as paltry as that some might have been. Judge Rogers, a judge in Northern California, fascinated me with her comments on character reference letters. She also alluded to, I probably don't, you probably don't want me as your judge if you're a white collar criminal, because there is a level of privilege and entitlement that most of the people in my courtroom don't have. What I hear from that is you've got to own that. Judges value authenticity. So if you're privileged, entitled, if you've had success, if you were born with privileges that other people have not had, rather than run from it, I think you need to own it. That's essentially what they said. Address the elephant in the room. Embrace the reality rather than pretending it didn't exist. Back to her comments about character reference letters, she said sometimes they do more harm than good because you have a friend or a family member saying how much they love the person, they didn't mean to do it. And she views some of those letters almost as if they've helped enable this conduct. It helped put the person in that courtroom and by not fully accepting responsibility or addressing what they're doing to make things right, rather focusing on how much they love them and they didn't mean to do it, it can continue to enable that conduct. It can be, it's the wrong message and she would encourage nothing being turned in if it's not a message of contrition. And she said too many letters she receives too many letters from people where they don't have a full comprehension of what the person actually did. It's glossed over and she thinks some letters may be written differently if they had a full extent of what the person did. Now, Judge Gutierrez, with whom I had the pleasure of speaking when the con conference was over or after his presentation, said during the presentation something that got a laugh from everyone in the room. And again, we're gonna do tons of videos and blogs and podcasts on this. He said, with white collar criminals, I'm not a buyer of the argument that it was just one time or aberrational or out of character. I'm of the opinion it's just the first time they got caught. So you have to embrace that perspective from a federal judge. And he's not the only one that's going to think it. So if you're going to a federal sentencing and your whole argument is this is the only time this has happened, you have to embrace their cynicism when he said to everyone in this room, this is just the first time that you got caught. I'm going to close this few minute video on the, the pre-sentence report. All judges agreed to many defendants fail to fully understand the importance of the probation report and how it impacts their sentence. And one judge, I think it was Judge Rogers, said that's more important to me than the sentencing memorandum that gets turned in. The probation report is too often glossed over. Defendants do not take the time to prepare. And she touched on items like if there's prior criminal conduct, if lawyers don't object to it, then essentially they're agreeing with the criminal conduct. Too many things are, are passed over. They spoke about the importance of health and getting that in the PSR, substance abuse issues. And I found Judge, forgive me for being a little sporadic and all over the place, I'm digesting what I heard in this 90 minute presentation. Judge Belwer said the importance of evidence from experts. For example, if you have a substance abuse issue 
it's one thing to go to a sentencing hearing saying, Your Honor, so and so, my client has a substance abuse issue. It's another to have a letter from a, an actual es expert attesting to the, the issue and how you're getting treatment. He said the same thing with, gam with a gambling expert. If you have a gambling problem, don't say you're going to get better. Provide analysis from an expert that you're getting better because those are all mitigating factors. Uh, Judge Wilmer made some comments about uh, time in a minimum security camp not really being prison. I think he said it's not like Martha Stewart was in the penitentiary. So I think that part of that message was it's okay to elaborate all of the collateral consequences that accompany going through a, a government investigation. So after you fixated on the, the victims, just don't focus on, well, prison, prison, prison. This judge essentially said, you're going to a camp. It's not really prison. It would be different life in transit and things of that nature. Or if you're not an American citizen, you have to go to low security prison. But he was basically saying, it is okay to focus on all of the collateral consequences from your own conduct, the negative reputation, loss of your career, damage to your family. I guess the, how I'll wrap up this video is the idea of family. Too many defendants, they say, come in and say, this is hard on my family. They didn't mean to do it. This is devastating for them. What a judge will say is you should have thought about that before you broke the law. You've got to embrace the right messaging and the way you're going to convey how this is impacting your family through your own, through your own actions. There's more I'd like to say. I'm standing here looking out into the beautiful. <laughs> the, what more should I say in, in this video? We're going to film more videos about this conference, specifically what these sentencing judges uh, said. I should say more here, but it, it's, it's skipping me. Please like and uh, subscribe to this the video and podcast, and we will continue to uh, produce content about what these three incredible judges said you need to do if your goal is not just getting the shortest possible prison term, but also things that you can do, conditions of release, life in prison, things that you can do to have the most productive experience. Thank you for your attention. We're going to get back to the conference and keep learning. Bye-bye.